Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. It is July 28, 2021. And as always during a Biden administration, there's a lot to talk about. But before we get to any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have uh, Leon the Word Brathwaite, Last Word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Ever. He is a pilot in the state of California. Uh, so uh, b- before we, and oh, my name is Jason McCain. I'll be your uh, host today. Before we get into anything, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I just got back from Freedom Fest this last uh, week. And so that was kind of an interesting conference in uh, uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, they had had to, the, the background on that is a little interesting. Normally they hold that in Vegas every year, uh, but they had, they, they got canceled last year with uh, the COVID issues. And let's see, we're sharing. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, Freedom Fest uh, uh, page. And if you actually search for it now, you'll start to get some uh, um, info on the next conference that's set up for next year. But uh, uh, normally they set this thing in Vegas. But last year with COVID, for a libertarian conference, (laughs) it got (laughs) shut down uh, because uh, Vegas just wasn't taking any chances. with COVID. So they moved it this year to the... uh, red state of South Dakota, uh, where Christy Nome is governor. And uh, she was also a speaker as well at this. And so uh, that was, uh, it went off pretty well, uh, it, for the most part. Um, and uh, we, we may have a few guests lined up in the coming weeks uh, from the show, or, or from the conference, uh, people that I was able to meet there, and uh, uh, we thought might be interesting guests on the show. Uh, so we'll be bringing some of them on. But uh, just uh, for any of you who aren't familiar with it, that's it's about a three-day conference. And some of the people involved, notables like Dave Rubin, Drew Pinsky, and Hersey Ali. Uh, hopefully our next governor, Larry Elder, was there. And I got my picture taken with him and got to talk hey. to him. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that was, uh, that was fun. You're rubbing, rubbing to lots of important people, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just for a little bit. Uh, I also got to talk to Spike Cohen, who was there as well. He is the... Uh, vice presidential candidate. There he is. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, so uh, hopefully we will get a few guests coming up uh, uh, in the coming weeks. And um, and so it goes. Uh, but uh, anyways, and, and you know, this is something we're hoping that we'll be able to attend in the future. And I definitely recommend it uh, for anybody who's sort of liberty minded and wants to uh, um, engage in a conference with uh uh, dynamic people in this area. I certainly learned a few things. Indeed, um, indeed. Yeah. So I, I can't think of anything else related to this topic. Did you guys have any other questions? Uh, or I, any I, I, I had a question. I had a question. So I was looking through. I was looking through the speakers that you um, from the information you provided, Jason, and I noticed that Naomi Wolf was listed as a speaker. Yes, she was. Uh, she was. So, oh yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. If, if, if I could finish. Yeah. Um, now, I don't have any problems with anybody and whatever they believe and that kind of stuff and things like that, but I don't know how Naomi Wolf would end up in a place like Freedom Fest. I mean, I, I only, she is a known leftist feminist, as far as I know. I know recently she ran into some difficulties with, with uh, Big Tech because of some things that she had posted um, online and I think she was twice suspended and that kind of stuff and things like that. But I didn't know how she would have ended up in, in, uh, in Freedom Fest. Uh, you know, she was, uh, I saw one of the uh, talks that she was involved in was uh, something on feminism and uh, not sure if it's feminine and liberty or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the topic was. She was also there, I think, for a book signing, and she may have been there for one other talk. I'm not sure. Uh, They weren't really things that I was geared towards. Uh, That's one thing about Freedom Fest is there is a lot going on. So they have a few events on the main stage uh, that most people hear. But in the afternoon, there, you know, there's like seven, eight, nine different rooms going on. And you, (laughs) you only have been able to choose one of them. So you wind up missing a lot of stuff. So uh, that wasn't really anything I was geared toward there. 
Um, but uh, yeah, if you're definitely interested in things like crypto or interested in issues with free speech online, uh, all kinds of uh, topics uh, related to libertarians, uh, they have lots of booths too, as well, you know, for things related to the Second Amendment and, uh, you know, trying to get kids uh, oriented, young people oriented into liberty as well. So just, just a lot of interesting people, a lot of people running for office and other things. So it's really a chance to to sort of get out there and network with, uh, you know, a lot of dynamic people in the liberty movement. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to put in a little more time on this in the upcoming shows. So okay. um, anyway, I, I have a question for you. Uh, you said you learned a lot. What was the one of your, uh, if I asked you what, thing you learned there that made an impression on you uh, off the top of your head right now, right here, what would you say? One thing that, that really struck me, and I hadn't thought about it in this way, but I was uh, listening to a panel with Larry Sharp, and uh, and, uh, and hopefully we might be able to get him on the show in the future too, uh, but uh, uh, it was about Zoomers versus Boomers, and, and the only reason I went to that talk was because Larry Sharp was up there, and I just I, I wanted to get to hear him on one of the... Uh, uh, talks in the day. But anyways, uh, uh, one of the other guys on the panel, uh, they were going back and forth and, and he brought up the term we often hear facts don't care about your feelings. He said, but you know, with a lot of these guys on the left and a lot of these young people, you know, you really have to understand that for them, feelings don't care about your facts. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought that was a good insight because, you know, I, I really uh, kind of <laughs> got along with that. Facts don't care about your feelings, but you really got to understand your audience, you know, when you're trying to reach people. And, um, <laughs> and for some people, they're, you know, since feelings don't care about your facts. So. Yeah, I, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, indeed. indeed. You so. know, I believe I believe it was Ben Shapiro who came up with the with the um, that facts facts don't care about your feelings. You know, but this is this is some deep insight to <laughs> when you think about the leftists. You know, already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you you want to keep your audience in mind at all indeed, times. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, let's let's move along to the next topic. Uh, next topic, uh, uh, actually, there's a bill coming uh, uh, to, I guess, attention in Florida, uh, where they're trying to, I guess, the, um, you know, it's sort of the flip side of all of this, uh, defund the police. It's uh, it's a little more on the police side of things, and it's to to give, uh, I guess, uh, make it illegal if a police officer tells you to stay back. Uh, you got to stay back like 30 feet with, uh, you know, when police are, you know, I guess going about their business. And that's kind of an interesting one. Um, you know, it, it, as far as, uh, you know, you, you can kind of see where things are, are coming from their end. You know, if you're a police officer and you're trying to deal with a dangerous situation, you don't want somebody running up with a camera in your face while you're doing your job. But, you know, 30 feet is kind of a long distance too, you know, for if you're a, a, a person who, just happens to be, you know, interested in seeing what's going on. And if a police officer said, tells you to stay back a full 30 feet, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing, the idea that that would criminalize that. And so there's concerns about potentially uh, that that uh, interfering with your First Amendment and ability to, I guess, film what's going on in some of these encounters. Uh, so I don't know. What, what did you guys think about this? It's, it seems like... Uh, you know, maybe a step too far. I, I, I could see on my end, I could see maybe 10 feet, but 30 feet seems, you know, a little excessive. And, and, and what if you just happen to be standing there and the police officer says, you've got to stay back. And that means you may be standing doing something and now suddenly you have to move back 30 feet. I, I don't know. It's kind of kind of weird. What do you guys think about this? I have I have a real problem with this bill. OK, now yeah. I'm not into demonizing the police. Not at all. OK, I want police officers around. I think defunding the police. We have seen the results of that in the major cities in America. However, this bill goes too far, okay, because I think it infringes upon our rights as citizens to see what public officials are doing, especially police officers who are acting in the name of the state. I mean, when I say acting, they could actually take a life in the name of the state on the streets, just like that, okay? Whether it's justified or not is something for us to determine after, after the fact. However, we as citizens have the right to see what government officials are doing. And I understand the fact that there are times that a police officer may need to keep you back at a certain distance for them to, to do their job. 
I fully understand that. But I think we already have laws on the books to cover that, where if a citizen is interfering with the, with the police officer in the performance of his duty, we could prosecute that citizen. Fine. And I accept those laws. But this, by telling people you have to go 30 feet back and the, subject, and the subjectivity of the police officer is the thing that's going to be germane in this law? No. I don't think we should support this law. I really don't think. I think it infringes too much upon our liberties. Well, yeah, he said it. And I'm the only addition I can make is that it uh, it surprises me that it comes out of Florida. But, right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I agree 100 percent with what Leon said. I, I really, you know, what are they going to do um, to be uh, cautious? You, you wouldn't go right up to the 30 foot mark, what you estimate it to be without measuring it. You would you would. Uh, you know, err on the side of safety and the officer would err on the side of safety too. And so 40 feet becomes, you know, th or the 30 feet becomes 40 and 50 feet. And, you know, it's all in, under discretion. Nobody's out there with a the measuring tape. So, right. um, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Um, and everything Leon said. Well, something you said as well, Tim, that you said it surprises you that it came out of Florida. And in a way, it doesn't quite surprise me because it's a uh, uh, Florida is kind of a solidly red state. And, you know, it appears that this is sort of the danger for libertarians of of, you know, getting too comfortable, I guess, with the, the right in these times where the left has just gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we, we tend to find some some alliances with these with these red states, but sometimes they go a little too far in the other direction. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah. Is, and know, we're here to we're here to uh, criticize the right and the left with reckless yeah. abandon. <laughs> Tim, thanks for making that clear. Quite frankly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of reckless abandon, Tim, I, I, now's yeah. a good time to jump into our uh, Good Guys with Guns segment. So what do you have yeah. for that on, uh, us on that yeah. end today? Yeah, Good Guys with Guns. Uh, I, and uh, there's there's a little part of the story that I'm going to add to at the end. Uh, but anyway, so here's what I got uh, from Fox News July 8th of this year. 12-year-old fatally shot an armed man who broke into his family's house in Louisiana and threatened his mother, authorities said. That's not a good thing to do. The home invasion happened June 30th near Clinton, news outlets reported. Brad LeBlanc, 32, was armed with a pistol when he encountered the unidentified woman outside her house that morning, according to Sheriff Jeffrey Travis. We'll be using his name here. LeBlanc forced the woman inside and a struggle broke out between them. Her son, who authorities haven't named, feared for his mother's life and shot LeBlanc with a hunting rifle, Travis said. The Vidalia man was pronounced dead at a hospital. Travis said his office doesn't have evidence at this time that would incriminate the boy and there aren't plans to bring charges against him. There are not. The local district attorney, as usual, will decide whether the shooting was justified when the sheriff office finishes its investigation. Travis said his office doesn't, oh wait, the sheriff told WAFB-TV that he's been in close contact with a woman whose home was broken into and that she has started taking steps to get her son help after the shooting. The mother is understanding that he's going to need some treatment and need to talk to people and helping him understand that he's a very normal person that was put in an abnormal situation, Travis said. Okay, so so that's all my addition to this. Uh, just recently, having uh, read some accounts on uh, uh, Quora from uh, people who struggled with PTSD for decades before finally just deciding, you know, I, I need help. I'm not sleeping. I'm, you know, they had all kinds of issues, and at, that's after successfully. Uh, shooting and killing someone in self-defense legitimately. And yes. so humans are not meant to kill other humans. And all this stuff, when we talk about good guys with guns, you know, is, you know, basically countering the left's uh, attack on guns. But uh, we don't want, or at least I don't want anyone to think that, you know, that we're taking this stuff lightly because it, it's, um, it's, it alters anyone's life uh, that has to go through a self-defense shooting and successfully makes it through. It's still going to alter their life in a negative way, and we, we want to recognize that fact. 
Yeah, you know, you know this. You you raise a very good uh, point there, you know, Tim, about PTSD. You know, and some people don't realize how tragic this thing could be mm -hmm. in terms of PTSD. One, I know some son, but this war, you also this PTSD, and it's very, it's a very, very tragic thing that people do not realize. And I could imagine this little kid, twelve years old, being placed in the position. You said twelve mm -hmm. years old, right? 12, yes. Yes. Being placed in the position where he had to kill someone to defend his mother's life. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is, God, you could imagine how that kid could be feeling right mm -hmm. now as we speak about this. True, true, true. So anyway, uh, so for anyone that is struggling from PTSD from previous uh, issue like this, uh, we rec we would, at least I recommend they, they seek help to, uh, because it's just, it's not normal thing to do and then you know this this also is true for people coming back from our numerous wars all over the place you know um unless you're a psychopath uh you usually have issues when you take another life indeed indeed human life at least human life at least yes yes we, we, i don't i don't mind the quail and the pheasant that i've not oh yeah down, but... or the chicken or the chicken or the lamb that i eat <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the quail were cute. I'll grant you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're also good. <laughs> well, that's a great example of uh, guns being being a tool here, and uh, this was one of those cases where it was a necessary tool, and uh, I guess used in the used in the right way. So uh, you know, it's yeah. unfortunate, but it's yeah. uh, uh, would have been much more unfortunate if it you know maybe it got gone the other yes. way. Yes, yep. exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think this this thing that we are doing here is a really good thing because too often all the left do is to put on all those criminals and all those gangbangers on TV. Those are the people that put on TV using guns to kill other people. And, you know, that, that's, that's, that's what we hear on TV. Oh, this gun violence is so bad. Those gun violence is so bad. Like if the guns just jumping off the ground and suddenly shoot people. It's not the gangbangers doing it. It's the people... It's just, it's just those guns, just jumping off the ground and just starting to shoot people at random. Well, well and, and as though just telling a gangbanger he's doing something illegal with that gun is suddenly going to make him stop. <laughs> 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 oh, you mean this is illegal? Okay, I guess there's a law. I didn't realize there was a law. Yeah, I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Oh, okay. Well, you know, on to the next topic. Um you know, this is kind of an interesting topic. We've been through about four years, uh, you know, during Trump of just all kinds of, uh, you know, crazy, uncivil things, I guess, said um, about him. And, you know, in some cases, you know, his, he was he was a little bit, you know, raw, too, in his language. But, I mean, you know, the stuff that was said about him, it just goes beyond the pale uh, as far as uh, any any president we've had in history that I can I can recall. Uh, but as far as uh, that goes, I, there was a case recently with Biden where there uh, in I, I guess it was in New Jersey where. Yes, it was. Um, yes. It was. And, and there was some lady who put a sign up in her uh, in her yard that said F Biden, uh, you know, and I won't spell out the full word, but I think you can <laughs> you can fill it in yourself. I have confidence in you. But, it had uh, four letters. And it ended with a K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but but in this case the the town uh tried to uh suppress her and say that it was illegal for her they they called it in, i think indecent speech or something like that and so mm. uh so under some indecency clauses they tried to force her to pull her signs down and they wanted to fine her i think 250 dollars a day i believe it was for uh every day that she kept those signs up and and so in this case uh you know kind of a rare case recently where the aclu jumped in um you know, against Team Blue, uh, you know, they were actually defending this woman's right to put that sign up in her yard. And uh, <laughs> and so eventually the uh, uh, the town pulled the lawsuit against her, pulled the, uh, you know, the, the action uh, against her so that uh, uh, now she's free to keep those signs up. <laughs> I guess, you know, it seems a little uncivil, but I mean, I definitely sympathize. <laughs> the way this Biden administration is going. What do you guys think about that? I mean, is this is this going too far, putting signs? I mean, we're in a new normal for speech, you know, related to our politicians. Yeah, um, yeah I'll um, I'll just start off. Uh, you know, as, as a pilot, you know, I'm no stranger to four-letter words, especially when the plane starts acting up or the autopilot <laughs> does something I don't want it to do or something. However, uh, you know, that's just between me and the plane. And, uh, 
you know, this this hits my sensibilities that, um, you know, in this day and age that that people go out and do this. I, I, I don't think they should. However, I think they have the right to uh, as you know, it and it goes back to the old thing uh, that uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Uh, but I do believe that our First Amendment rights um, uh, in this case uh, over overwhelm, uh, you know, the sensitivities of the town, uh, even though I, I would be sensitive to that too. Uh, I've seen that, that flag in, on the uh, freeway, uh, mm -hmm. local freeway. I've seen it on the back of a pickup truck. And <laughs> I, have, I have seen it too. Yes. You haven't seen it? Yeah. So, yeah. so I chuckled about it and all that. I mean, you well, know, well, we, remember they, they had songs written to Donald Trump that said this, that they blasted <laughs> on the radio. Literally yeah. said F Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, really? okay. yes. oh, well, yeah. <laughs> So uh, anyway, yeah, there, there we are. What do you think, Leon? Well, you know, you, Jason, you're right. The way you set this up about all the indecent things that have been said about, about Donald Trump during the four years, and nobody ever tried to prosecute or, or anything like that, anyone, for some of the things that they said about Donald Trump during his term as presidency, uh, of, of his presidency and things that they continue to say about him. But I think the First Amendment is absolute, except for those exceptions that the Supreme Court have laid out. <laughs> now, I don't like my neighbor. I don't think I would like it if my neighbor put out a sign like that. I think it, it's, you know, it's in uncivil or incivil or whatever the correct word is. Yeah. But profane, profane speech, indecent speech, offensive speech is all protected by the First Amendment. As a matter of fact, that is why we have the First Amendment, to protect speech like this. As much as we hate it, but it should be protected. Because if the government can decide what we can or cannot say, then we are, in all, we are all in big trouble, lots of trouble. And that is why I think that 1971 case of the Supreme Court, I think it was Cohen versus California, came out the right here out of California, where offensive speech, no matter how offensive and profane it is, as long as it's not inciting violence, as long as it is not crying fire in a, in a, in, in a, in a crowded theater, offensive speech is protected speech. And we must hold to that as dearly as we can. Well, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, our, our free speech is definitely one of our most sacred uh, freedoms. Um, but, uh, you know, this this uh, brings us up to that point in the show. I think our knucklehead noise patrol, this would be a good time to get in because you talk about offensive speech <laughs> and or, set, or goofy speech. Here we go. Um, you know, knucklehead noise patrol is something where we try and bring up something silly that uh, somebody has said. And uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, CNN's uh, journalist Brian Stelter was uh, interviewing Carl Bernstein uh, on his uh, show. Um, I, don't think, I, don't think you call, I don't think you should call that guy a journalist, but it's okay. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's the best they got. <laughs> That's the norm for CNN, I think. But, but anyways, um, it, 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 so they were talking on, uh, on his show, Reliable Sources, and now they've dreamed up a, a new way, I guess, to go after Trump, and it's that he's apparently a war criminal now. I, I, it's hard to understand what war Trump was in <laughs> did that. But anyways, uh, let's go to the quote. So Bernstein was on the show and he said, I think we need to calmly step back and maybe take a look at Trump in a different context. He is America's, our own American war criminal uh, of a kind we've never experienced before. And Stelter says to him, uh, you just said war criminal. What do you mean war criminal? And Bernstein goes on. I did. In uh, international law, there have been, uh, quote, crimes against humanity. I think what we're talking about, Trump's crimes as an American war criminal <clears throat> in his own country that he has perpetrated upon our people, including the tens of thousands of people who died because of his homicidal negligence in the pandemic, putting his own electoral interest above the health of our people, uh, as they were slaughtered in this pandemic. I mean, uh, I, <laughs> is this news? I mean, is this a news channel? <laughs> is this just a, a, a lefty fantasy? I, he's slaughtered? They were, uh, it, it, 
it seems to me we're using the vaccine that was generated through Trump's uh, uh, what, what do they call that fast track or whatever it was that he, uh, Operation Warp yeah. Speed. Operation Warp, Warp Speed. Speed. Yes, I, I, it just is is amazing the the rhetoric and the language these people use. And then now he's a war criminal. It just uh, seems more ways to try and burn him at the stake. What do you guys think? This just. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know. Um, let, let me let me start. Th- this guy's. Uh, uh, I, I keep using that word, don't I? Okay, I'm going to use a new one. He's an imbecile. Okay, <laughs> and um, <laughs> he, um, you know, uh, th- this whole idea behind killing people in the pan- the, the people were were going to die. I mean, y- you know, y- a certain number of people that are weak and old, like me, you know, or, well, at least old, uh, are uh, you know are going to die from COVID and. Uh, you know, they, they, it happened all over the world. I mean, to, to say, I mean, the percentages in the United States weren't that different from everywhere else. In some cases, better, many cases. So any, anyway, I mean, the, the guy's in total income poop. And um, however, though, uh, and Trump was, if anybody was a war criminal, it'd be all these presidents that have waged war in the Middle East for under false pretenses. I, I might remind them, uh, such as war, uh, weapons of mass destruction, uh, you know, you name it. Oh, how about the Gulf of Tonkin, which killed numerous people in Vietnam? A lot of people, including Americans, all from the Gulf of Tonkin incident, totally fabricated. OK, and nobody even nobody even. Um, uh, disputes that. Okay. Um, it, so in pretty much every engagement we've gotten into outside of, you know, World War II were uh, propagated by um, a sleight of hand and lying by the federal government and usually the president. Okay. So, um, you know, <laughs> those guys are not war criminals, yet Donald Trump is b- because of his actions. Seriously. I mean, so anyway, that's all I have to say. How about Leon? You know, Carl Bernstein at one time was a good reporter, okay? He, his reporting exposed corruption of the, in, within the Nixon administration. And because of his reporting, Nixon was forced to resign. So I have to give him that. But this man have gone bananas, gone nuts. <laughs> Seriously. Everything now, oh, this is worse than Watergate. That's his new line <laughs> these days. And now I guess... His new line now is, oh, Trump is a war criminal. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Bernstein, it was China who unleashed the virus upon us. You hear? It was China. So if Trump is a war criminal by your definition, what the hell are you going to say about China? You want yeah. us to go bomb China? Is that what you want us to do? Because if Trump is a war criminal, then the Chinese must be something worse than that. So please, <laughs> shut up your idiotic mouth. Thank you. Well, we we about reached the end of our show. It'll be a crime if we go on any longer. <laughs> so I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. But thanks so much for joining us for this one. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next one. Until then, stay free. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m.